know that that man-made conflict also had a role to play, naming ongoing wars in Syria, Yemen, and South Sudan. We've got to end some of these wars. We've got to bring these wars to an end so we can achieve the sustainable development goals that we so desire. He said, doubling the conflicts, health crisis, and looming famine as icebergs in front of the Titanic. All right, just um, one more oh, paragraph uh -huh. left. Um, it says, in August, the WFP has said the number of people facing malnutrition could spike by 80% by the end of the year. Warning of a famine of biblical proportions as millions risk starvation. UNICEF, meanwhile, predicted in May that in 118 low and middle income nations, 1.2 million children under the age of 5 could die in the following six months, pinning the surge on declining access to medical care due to lockdowns, curfews, and transport disruptions. All right, so there you have it, man. Um, what's what's on the horizon? What's around the corner? It's only gonna get worse before it gets better. And uh, you know, the Most High said He's gonna visit this earth that He made because they have walked in great pride. All right, let's get that. This second Ezra chapter eight. And verse fifty it says, For many great misery shall be done to them that in the latter time shall dwell in the world, because they have walked in great pride. Alright, now what does the the scripture say about pride? That uh the beginning of pride is one when one departeth from his maker. Alright. So Israel you know, departed from the Lord and went to because they wanted to be like the other nations so bad. The most I said, okay, you know, they're going to rule over you and their idols are going to be a snare unto you. So now look at where that got us. All right. So the most high is sending these plagues. Let's get a uh, second Ezra 16. Um, man, second Ezra 16. I'm gonna start at verse 5. It says, Plagues are sent unto you, and what is he that may drive them away? May any man drive away an hungry lion in the wood, or may any one quench the fire and stubble when it hath begun to burn? May one turn again the arrow that is shot of a strong archer. The mighty Lord sendeth the plagues, and who is he that can drive them away? So you see where that's getting at once has begun. It's not going to stop until it's over. Okay. He shall cast lightnings, and who shall not fear? He shall thunder, and who shall not be afraid? The Lord shall threaten who shall not be utterly beaten to powder at his presence. Alright, so this is that time. This is that time. It's like we read in 2nd Ezra 8 and 50. You know, many miseries are coming because they've walked in great pride. You know, in uh, Hosea 4 and 1, it says that the Most High has a controversy with, with the inhabitants of the land because there's no knowledge of God in the land. There's no mercy. There's no truth. All right, for wickedness has exceedingly polluted the whole earth. All right, so the Most High is angry with the wicked every day. He's not in a good mood, man. And he's the last place you want to be is in front of the Lord in a bad mood. Anywhere in the world would be better than that. And he's angry at the wicked, you know. And he said, Judgment is going to begin at the house of Israel. Okay. Uh, I'm going to the uh, famines. 
All right, second answer 16. I'm going to start at verse 17. It says, Woe is me, woe is me, who will deliver me in those days? Right? Because, uh, you know, when these things begin to come to pass, which they are, you know, it's going to be some tough times, man. It says, The beginning of sorrows and great mornings, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars, and the power shall stand in fear. The beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? Alright, so this is only the beginning of sorrows. This is only the beginning of the end. Alright, this is great mornings. The beginning of famines. Great death. It says that the slain of the Lord shall be many. The beginning of wars. All we hear about is wars now. In these last days. All right, the beginning of evils. What shall I do when these things shall come? Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. But for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness, nor be always mindful of the scourges. All right, jumping down to verse 22, it says, For many of them that dwell upon the earth shall perish of famine, and the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy. All right, so people are going to die all types of ways. Like in that show, A Thousand Ways to Die, there's going to be a thousand ways to die. And the most high is the most creative uh, manpower or most creative power in the universe. He created everything. It says the issues, to him belong the issues of death. And that in that day, people shall seek death and not find it, man. People, you know, those that don't die of the famine, the hunger, the, the sore is going to be, it's going to kill you, man. All right, now let's go into, uh, an example of, uh, Famine in the scriptures. I know it's in the book of Kings. Um, here, let me see if I can find it like this. All right, Second Kings chapter six and verse twenty-five. And there was a great famine in Samaria, and behold, they besieged it until an ass's head was sold for fourscore pieces of silver, and the fourth part of a cat of dove's dung for five pieces of silver. And as the king of Israel was passing by upon the wall, there cried a woman unto him, saying, "Help, my lord, O king!" And he said, "If the Lord do not help thee," Whence shall I help thee? Out of the band floor or out of the wine press? All right, because this is, is going to be the times where only the Lord, if He's with you, can deliver you and save you. All right. And the king said unto her, What aileth thee? And she answered, it, This woman saith unto me, Give thy son that we may eat him tomorrow, and we will eat my son tomorrow. So we boiled my son and did eat him. And I said unto her on the next day, Give thy son that we may eat him. And she had hid her son. Alright, so this is what was going on during a famine. During uh, the ancient world. Alright. So, how do you think these people out here in the world today are going to act and behave when... They can't eat after two hours. Right? These people don't fast. They don't think about fasting. They're unhealthy. They eat a lot of processed and fast food. All right? So uh, their bodies are always begging 
for processed junk food, man. And it's not going to be there. You know, because there's going to be a great, great famine of biblical proportion coming. Okay. This is the book of Daniel chapter 12 and verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. Alright, so a time of trouble, such as never since there was a nation even to that same time. is going to, is <laughs> on the horizon. All right, icebergs in front of the Titanic. All right, that is what's coming. This is the end of, uh, of Babylon, man. This is the end of Babylon reincarnated, man. So the end of this place means our salvation. All right, um, this is, uh, Matthews 24 and 3. And as he, that he's Yahweh Shai said upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us what these things be, and what shine, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world. And Yahweh Shai answered and said unto him, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am the anointed, and shall deceive many. Right, you know, you got a lot of false doctrines out there. Not just uh, the Roman Catholic Church and um, Christianity, but even uh, sell out Israelite camps. Okay, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Alright, so even when all these things shall come happen... The end is still not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All of these are the beginning of sorrows. Alright. Just like it says in, in 16. In 2 Israel 16. You know. This is only the beginning. Alright. The beginning of famines. The beginning of great death. The beginning of mournings. All oh, this is the beginning of sorrows, and we haven't even, like, gotten there fully, to its fullest yet. So it's going to be a crazy, crazy, crazy time. All right. Matthew 24 and 21, for then shall, for then shall be great tribulation. Such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Alright, so if this world were to continue the way it is currently, there would be no flesh to be saved at the end. Because when Esau is ruling, it's just death. Destruction, that's his blessing. Revelation 6, you know, to, um, it was given to him a great sword to take peace from the earth. And he took peace from the earth. All right, in the book of 1 Maccabees, the first chapter talks about when uh, Alexander reigned, that the world was quiet before him. All right, evil was multiplied in the earth. All right. So guess what? His uh, his prophets are going to be protected and taken care of in these times. All right. This is Proverbs one and verse twenty three. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you because I have called, and you refused. I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded. But you have set at naught at my counsel and with none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. 
when your fear cometh as a desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose to fear the Lord. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. So the Lord is doing all this through his prophets. All right. The Mosai speaks by his servants, the prophets. So when it's talking about he's called and you refused uh, when you have said not in my counsel and with none of my reproof when he stretched out his hand and no man regarded alright that's the prophets you mock his prophets you mock the Lord you reject his prophets you reject the Lord alright so the the prophets of, of Yahweh are the most despised and hated why because they teach the truth and the truth hurts, and the truth is ugly, but it doesn't change that it's the truth. And uh, these people have uh, itching ears, which is the desire to hear something good. All right, speak to us smooth things. All right, that's how these people are. So this word has reached to the ends of the world in some way, shape, or fashion. Mainly through the internet and social media. But everybody knows who the prophets are. And they pass by them. And everybody knows who we are now. So nobody has an excuse. Alright. So I'm going to end it off with one more. book of Isaiah sixty five and verse uh twelve it says therefore will I number you to the sword and you shall all bow down to the slaughter because when I call ye did not answer when I spake ye did not hear but did evil before mine eyes and did choose that wherein I delighted not therefore thus saith the Lord Yahweh Behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. Alright, so the destruction and the evil is meant for those that rejected this word and for the wicked. Alright, that's for them. Salvation is for his elect, his chosen. Those that took heed, those that, um, you know, repented, seek the Lord ten times more, and endured until the end. So I'm in it there, Lord willing, it was an edifying lesson, and as always, all honor, glory, and praises goes to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rukakudash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Muslim. Until next time, I say, Shalom.